Buddy Young is one of the most important players in the over century-long history of the Chicago Bears. He never played for the Bears. In fact, in his nine-year playing career, he was best known as the Baltimore Colt, to the point where his number 22 jersey was officially retired by the Colts. But without Buddy Young, the Bears do not get Gale Sayers. Without Buddy Young, the history of the Kansas Comet, the Chicago Bears, and the National Football League looks vastly different. This is the story of how Gale Sayers became a member of the Chicago Bears, thanks to Buddy Young's help. The context behind this is important, because in the first half of the 1960s, there was a massive bidding war for players between the American Football League and the National Football League. While the AFL wasn't considered a major threat to the NFL at first, as time progressed, the league was emerging as a legitimate threat to lure players away. This intensified on a year-to-year -year basis, and this was shown during the 1964 NFL Draft. Tackle Scott Appleton was taken by the Dallas Cowboys with the fourth overall pick, but he decided to play for the Houston Oilers in the AFL. Quarterback Pete Bethard was taken by the Detroit Lions with the fifth overall pick, but he decided to play for the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFL. Two of the top five picks in the draft decided to spurn the NFL to play for the Mickey Mouse League. A bunch of other players chosen later in the draft would do the same, including guys like Matt Snell, Jerry Philbin, and Sid Blanks. Commissioner Pete Rozelle knew that this was a problem, and with no talks of a merger between the leagues just yet, and with no signs that the arms race was slowing down anytime soon, he needed a plan. So he assembled a special task force of recruiters of sorts. Call it a babysitting platoon, if you will. The goal of this group was simple. Get eligible college players thinking about going to the AFL to go to the NFL instead. Get them to bypass the competition, whatever it takes. On November 28, 1964, both the AFL and NFL drafts were held on the same day. And there was a real threat that Gail Sayers was going to sign with the Kansas City Chiefs. Even though the Bears chose him with the fourth overall pick in the first round, the Chiefs chose him in the first round as well. Sayers was born in Wichita, Kansas. He played his college football at Kansas. And now we have the opportunity to play pro football right at home. The average NFL salary in the 1960s was somewhere in the ballpark of $20,000. Meanwhile, Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, was giving Gail Sayers the opportunity to make way more than that. As Sayers said to Buddy Young, when a millionaire opens the doors for you, you get a little bit scared. But Young had a mission. Gail Sayers no matter what. As Young said, my orders were to get Sayers in the National Football League. And so the NFL had Young babysit Sayers. Young was in constant contact with Sayers, following him around for an entire week, just selling him on the NFL. Now while this might seem stalkerish on paper and might actually detract someone from playing for the NFL, it's important to note that Young and Sayers knew each other for a few years at this point, and they were good friends. During this week, Young would sell Sayers on the NFL, and it wound up working, as Sayers wound up signing with the Chicago Bears. And Bears owner and head coach George Hallis credited Young with being the one to get the deal done, and with being the one to get Sayers to join the team. The rest, as they say, is history. Sayers became one of the greatest halfbacks to ever play the game. In his seven-year career, he made it to four Pro Bowls, was named a five-time first-team All-Pro, led the league in rushing yards twice, led the league in all-purpose yards in each of his first three seasons, was named the Offensive Rookie of the Year in 1965, was named a member of the All-1960s team, was named a member of the NFL 100 team, and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1977. Quite the resume, considering how short his career was due to injuries. This committee that Young was on wasn't entirely successful. That same year, perhaps the most famous incident of the draft competition between the leagues occurred, when Joe Namath, chosen in the first round by the St. Louis Cardinals, spurned the NFL to play in the American Football League for the New York Jets. But it did manage to get a few players to the NFL. And in the case of Gale Sayers, this committee and Buddy Young were able to change the course of Bears history forever. Be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.